Chapter 2 Legendary It had been seven years since Tal and Scarlet's mother, Paluma, had disappeared. There was a period of time that started about a year after her mother left, when Tella preferred the idea of Paluma being dead. If she was still alive, Tella reasoned, she made the choice never to return to her daughters, which meant she couldn't have really loved them. But if Paluma was dead, then maybe she intended to return, but had never been given the chance. If she was dead, it was possible she still loved Scarlet and Tella. So for years, Tella clung to the hope that her mother had met death. Because no matter how hard Tella tried, she could not stop loving her mother and it hurt too much to imagine that her mother didn't love her back. Tella pulled out the letter she received from her friend. Scarlet had left to tell Julian they go with him to Valenda, but Tella didn't know how long she'd be gone. So she read swiftly. Dear Don Tella, congratulations on escaping your father and surviving Carbo. I am pleased our plan worked, although I had no doubts you would survive the game. I am sure your mother will be greatly quite proud, and I believe you should be able to see her soon. But first, you must keep up. You're an of our bargain. I hope you hadn't forgotten what you owe me in exchange for all that I have shared with you. I plan on collecting my payment very soon. Truly yours, a friend. That aching in Tella's head returning this time. It had nothing to do with the dream she consumed the night before. She couldn't shake the sense something was missing from the letter. She swore there had been more to it when she read it at the party. Tella had the message to the butterscotch lies streaming through her window. No hidden lines of script appeared. No words shifting before her eyes. Unlike legend, her friend didn't lace his letters with magic tricks, but she often hoped he would. Maybe then she'd be able to confirm the identity. She first contracted him more than a year ago to help her and her sister escape from her father. But Tella still had no idea who her friend was. For a while, she wondered if her correspondent was actually legend. But her friend and legend could not be the same person. The payment her friend referred to made Tella certain of that. She still needed to acquire the payment. But now that she and Scarlet were going to Valenda with Legends players, Tella felt more confident she would. She had to. Her pulse danced faster as she hid her friend's letter and opened her smallest trunk. The one she not allowed the players to rifle through during Carvel. She had filled it with money pilfered from her father. But that was not the only treasure it concealed. The interior was lined with an appealing burnt orange and lime green brocade that most people never look at closely enough to notice the slit along the edge of it which allowed her to hide a catalyst for an entire situation, the oracle. Tala's fingers tingled as they always did when she, when she pulled out the wicked little card. After her mother disappeared, her father had gone mad with rage. He'd not been a violent man before, but when his wife left him, he changed almost instantly. He'd thrown her clothes in the gutter, turned his bed into firewood, and burned everything else into ash. The only items that had escaped were the scarlet earrings Paluma had given a scarlet and the raw fire opal ring that Tella had stolen and the uncanny card in Tella's hand if she had not taken that had stolen. If she had not taken this card and the ring right before her mother left, Tella would have had nothing to remember her mother by. The opal ring had shifted color shortly after her mother's disappearance, turning fiery red and purple. The edges of the oracle card were still made of molten gold, but the image in the shimmering center had changed as well countless times. Tella hadn't known what it was when she first stolen it from her mother's deck of destiny. Even days later, when she looked in the mirror and seen fat tears streaming down her cheeks, recreating the image the oracle had first revealed. Tella didn't piece it together. It wasn't until more time went by that she noticed that when the oracle revealed an image, it always came to pass. At first, the image were inconceptual. A maid trying on Tella's favorite gown, her father's cheating at cards. Then the visions of the future grew more upsetting until one day immediately after Scarlet's engagement to the Count. Tella saw a more disturbing image. Scarlet was dressed in a snow-white wedding gown, studied with rubies and petals and whispered thin lace. It should have been beautiful, but in the Arco's vision it was stained with mud and blood and tears that Scarlet saw violently into her hands. The horrid image remained for months, as if the cards were asking Tella to prevent her sister's arranged marriage and change the future.
not the telemony prodding. She already been following a plan for her and her sister to run away from their controlling father. One that involved legend and caravan. Telling you if anything would tempt her risk of her sister to take a chance at another life, it would be caravan. But legend wouldn't respond to any of Tella's letters. Just as he never responded to Scarlet's. Then Michelle and Arco incited Tella to search for more information about Legend. There was wild rumors Legend had killed someone during a game years before, and Tella finding out more about the wood convinced him to pay attention to her. To fuel her search, Tella collected one every favor she was owned, until she'd been told to ride to an establishment called Antine's Most Wanted. It was supposedly a business in the Meriden Empire capital city of Alenda. No one ever told her exactly what sort of business it was in. But after Tell asked for information about Legend, the shop responded with a message that said, We found a man who agreed to help you. But be warned, he often requires payment that involves more than money. When Tella wrote back to ask for the man's name, the man himself simply replied, It's best if you don't know a friend. Tella always took the response to mean her friend was a criminal. But he'd been a faithful and clever correspondent. The information had been provided about Legend was not what she expected, but using it, Tella had written the Legend again and pleaded for his help. She succeeded this time. Legend replied to Tella, and as soon as he agreed to help her and her sister escape her their father, the article changed from Scarlet in a wrecked wedding gown to Scarlet at a lavish ball in a gown made of rubies and drew the eye of every suitor she walked by. This was the future. Tella wanted for her sister, full of glamour and celebrations and choices. Unfortunately, a day later the vision was praised by another glimpse of the future that had not changed since. Tella didn't know if the enchanted card would show the same awful picture today. After everything that had happened during Carvel, she hoped that perhaps it had changed. But the image hadn't shifted. All the air and hold fled Tella's lungs. The card still showed her mother. It looked like a battered version of the lady prisoner. Dipicated in decks of destiny, covered in blood and caged behind the harsh iron bars of a dim prison cell. This was the future that had prompted Tella to make another request for her friend to ask him if he could also help her find her mother. Tella's previous searches for Paluma had led nowhere, but her friend, who was not bound to a backwater island like Tella, clearly had better ideas and methods on how to search. She had memorized his reply by heart. Dearest Aunt Tella, I'm looking into the request regarding your mother and I already have a story lead. I believe the reason you couldn't find her before is because Paluma was not her real name. However, I will not be able to reunite you with her until you pay me back for the information I sent you about Caraval's master. Legend, in case you forgot. I need Legend's true name. The others I are I've talked to do this have all failed, but since you'll be spending time on his private owl, I'm sure you will succeed. Once you have the name, we can discuss my payment for finding your mother. Yours, a friend. This news about Paluma's name was the only information Tella had learned about her mother since she left some years ago. It gave Tella genuine hope. She had no idea what her friend wanted Legend's name, whether it was for personal use or if it was information another client had tried to purchase. But Tella didn't care. She would do whatever it took to uncover Legend's name. If Tella could do this, she believed she could find her mother again. Her friend had not let her down before. Good lord! Tella looked up to see her sister's large eyes as wide as she re entered the room. Where did you get all these coins? Scarlet pointed at Tella's open trunk. But on the word coins, Tella's thoughts were suddenly elsewhere. Her friend had wrapped a strange coin inside the last letter he sent. That's what she was missing. It must have slipped out of her pocket when she'd been tumbling around the forest floor with Dante. Tella needed to get back to the forest and finish. She concealed the article inside her pocket as she shot toward the door. Where are you going? Scarlet said, Don't tell me you stole all that money. Don't worry, Tella replied. I took it off from our father and he thinks I'm dead. Before Scarlet could respond, Tella raced from the room. She moved so fast she could already out she was already outside at the tarainted house on a street lined with heart box shaped shops. When she realized she was still barefoot, a mistake she felt quickly. God's teeth Tella yelped. She was only halfway to the forest and it was the third time she stabbed her toe. 
This time, she swore a rock jumped up from the cobble street and attacked her exposed feet on purpose. I swear, if another one of you bites my toes, I will drown you in the ocean where the mermaids can use you to wipe their... Tella heard a low, deep and unnerving familiar chuckle. She told herself not to turn around, not to give in to her curiosity, but being told no even for herself only made Tella want to do the opposite. Carefully, she snuck a look over her shoulder and instantly regretted it. Dante stretched her down the other side of the quiet street with amused eyes fixed on her. Tella averted her gaze, hoping if she ignored him, he'd stay on his side of the road and pretend he hadn't just seen her yelling at a rock. Instead, he crossed the street, intentionally striding toward her with those impossibly long legs of his, broad mouth smelling as if he had a secret.